Welcome everyone to Authors Bantering, the Monday podcast where myself and Ian M. Rogers discuss writing topics. This week's going to be a little bit fun. We're going to go over how much should you read. Um, I know we're all told basically read everything, right? Read as much as possible. And I think at the end of the day, we're going to say that probably at this whole at the end of this whole thing, we're probably going to say read as much as possible. But realistically, let, let's go over numbers here. Um, I'm going to say right away, I'm a hypocrite. I don't know about you, but I'm a huge hypocrite here because I'm going to give you a number. I'm going to give a number here in a minute to read that That's I haven't crazy, done. I wasn't sure if we were going to talk numbers when we were doing that. Oh, I yeah. We no, no, no. Oh, no. We're talking general, numbers. Yeah, no, no, no. We're discussing the numbers gritty, here. Gritty, no. Like, yeah, by, by all means. No, no, no. I mean, my, my good read is right, on, is right on here. You guys can check it out. So over the past, I'm going to give a number to admit that I have not hit in probably a couple of years, mm-hmm. um, which is going to go to my, which I'm going to preface by saying this up front you have to find out, I think, what kind of reader you are in terms of if you're the person that reads to relax or you're the person that has to be relaxed to read. I am the opposite. I am the end of that. I have to be relaxed to read. I cannot, if I got other things going on, other things in my life that's happening, it's hard for me to sit down and unwind with a book. Book reading does not calm me. It entertains me, but I have to be relaxed to do it. It's, 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 it'd be like me going to watch a movie, but I got like other things in my head going on. It's like, I can't focus on the movie. I, I got, you know, I don't know about you, Ian, but are, are you kind of the same way with that? Well, well, well no, this is, um, I'm, I'm trying to think about how I would answer that question. And I think for me, because I read so much and because I read so many different types of things, um, and because of the way I read, um, I tend to read, you know, both when I'm relaxed or both when I'm stressed or, you know, when I'm busy or when I'm, when I'm not busy. Um, I tend to read very um, uh, non-discriminatorily. So I'll read, you know, things that are, you know, the basis of genre fiction and comic books and things like that. And then also read, you know, very difficult nonfiction academic type writing. And, um, you know, sometimes in I, you know, I always finish every book I start, you know, barring oh. some, you know, <laughs> very, very terrible, you know, issues or I can't stand this book. You are a better man than me. Once, once in a blue moon, I, I will. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I've got a couple of stacks of books in my room and, you know, I'll pick a book because, you know, you know, I want to read it or it's different than the last book that I read or, you know, it's just been sitting there for a really long time and I want to get through it or I, you know, it came up recently and I was like, oh, yeah, that's in my to read stack. I want to I want to pick that up. And so I'll I'll read that book over the course of, you know, a week. I try to read a book a week, um, you know, barring very long books, of course. But um, and so, you know, over the course of the week, my mood is, of course, going to change. And so if I've got, you know, one book that I'm making my way through and on, you know, Monday I'm in a great mood and, you know, or I'm, if I'm in a very studious mood and I'm, you know, it, it, willing to engage with this very difficult writing, um, maybe on Tuesday I'm very stressed and I maybe don't always have the mental capacity to yeah. engage with that um, difficult writing. Over time, I've just trained myself to change my mindset when I sit down and open the book. Okay. You know, I'll, um, you know, my mood will change when I read in a good way. You know, it's, I can bring myself out of those kind of stressful funks, even if it's with something that's very difficult versus something that's more of a beach read, you know? And I think that gotcha. for me, I didn't used to be able to do that by any, by any means, but I think just over, you know, decades of, of reading books, and different reading different kinds of books um and reading just in this very um non-discriminatory kind of way yeah that's something that i've that i've come to do gotcha and i tend to read mostly within 80 percent of it's usually lit thick and everything else is Mm. like 20 percent like genre for me that's a good Um, number that that that, yeah but of course you're because i write literary fiction yeah because i I write literary fiction is better but you know as a literary fiction when you work within that yeah you should read your genre you know within what you want to write and then 20 percent everything else like i think that's i think that's really good mine mine's probably more like let's say 60 percent 60 um literary fiction um and then you know 40 percent kind of the the rest i guess as it were Gotcha. Um, I'm trying to read more nonfiction. You know, I've got a lot of nonfiction books I want to read. And yeah, I, I really read that. Stuff. Is important, <laughs> is important to me. Just you know, just about interesting things. There you go. Um, you know, books that are very different from what I write. You know, I'll yep. you know read those to kind of get ideas. Um, or books that I feel like I should read. Maybe you know that. Um, you know, it feels like everybody's read but me. So I want to be you know kind of in on the um, you know in on the in on the fun. 
in, yeah. in the fun, you know. Um, books that are maybe um, relevant to me for a different reason, of course, those usually get moved up kind of higher on the list. Okay. Um, books that friends have written, I think, um, or books that people I know have written, you know, I want to check out, I want to see this person's writing yep. is always really important to me. Um, or even just, you know, I heard a writer on a podcast and their work sounded cool. And so I bought their book and now it's in my to read stack, you know, it's all, I'll get a lot of stuff that way. Got gotcha. Yeah. And so I, I was looking at my phone here. I, not that I was not a, acknowledging you or paying attention to basically, but I wanted to see what, what I've read. I was looking at my Goodreads. I was trying to figure out what, how much I had read last year. So mm-hmm. beginning of the numbers. So last year I had read 18 books, um, mm. which, yeah, it feels about right. Um, so it's actually close to what I thought I was going to say, actually, because I'm going to give what I think the number should be for people in here in a second, but 18 is pretty close. Um, mm. What I was going to say is if you were – I'm going to give you the answer the same answer that I would give if someone was, was actually was, 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 like a, was like a client of mine, right? If I, if I was your writing coach and I was going to give you, the, give you this, I'm going to tell you what I tell people that I coach, which is two books a month, so 24 books in a year. And then pick one to two books to do a close reading on. And when I say close yeah. reading, what I mean is that you yeah. you read the book, you do potentially do copy work, you do analysis, you see how the author yes. did different techniques. Um, you, you know, how do they show this? You know, how do they show symbolism in this chapter here? How do they write um, that opening there? How do, how do they weave in like different perspectives and all that stuff? How do they use like stream of consciousness weaved in with with more direct um, prose, mm-hmm. etc. That's what I would give you. So 24 books a year pick, and pick one of the two books basically to do to spend the whole year studying and analyzing. Myself, I do base, I did basically 18 books a year and I did um, one book I did a close reading on the whole year. So one mm. book I studied for the entire year. And when That's, you say close reading, it's a close reading of 100% the entire book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so for know, the year, you stick, you, yeah. you stick with that book for a year. That book basically stays on your desk for the year. I have one. I don't... I will never yeah. put in my Goodreads yeah. what I'm doing a close reading on. I never put it in there, so you'll yes. never know what it is. I feel like it's it is such a personal thing to me that what I study that and, I do not put it even out in the world. Um, but I just simply it's study it. A different it. kind of process too. You know, you're going through yeah. at a different speed, of course, but you're looking for different things. Well, I've already re- I probably already read it through at least once. In a different way. Yeah, so I've already read through at least once. You do, yes. so I usually yes, I read, yes, read yes. through once. Loved it. That's why I made a close read that I was like, I want to write like this author or I want to take yes. something from this author. There's a certain skill this author has. There's a certain technique this author particularly does really well. Maybe it's dialogue, what have you, that I'd like to incorporate in my own work. Well, I'm going to go do a yes. close reading on it. So you'll never see it. You'll never know what it is. I, I, I treat, like, treat it like it's – it's like my religion. Like, like seriously, like, like yes. I, I, I treat that secretly. Like, yes. I, I have a whole shelf right over there where I put just the works that I have studied before, like previous years, stacked them up there because they mean that much to me. Um, and so, yeah, oftentimes we see it's, it's a lot of its analysis, a lot of its copy work. I'll just sit there and I'll peruse through it and I just keep it on me all year. Um, just keep it around the whole year just to study and then it goes on that shelf just so I always have a copy somewhere. Um that's how I tend to operate. So 24 books a year, so two books a month, that, that that's what I think. And then pick one to really study really, really, really closely. That's what I would tell you if, if you were working, you know, again, if you're working, if you hired me and you were working underneath me, um, that, that, that's what I would tell you would be something like that. So um, what, what would you recommend for, say, the ratio of this close reading to other kinds of reading? Like, for example, yeah. you know. Five percent close reading, ninety five percent the rest, or fifty fifty. Yeah, five percent. No, five percent. So I, yeah, the only the only exceptions to that really I would do. No, even then, because I was gonna say I was gonna say in my grad school, so twenty four books a year is basically what I was doing in grad school. Like that, that mm. that's pretty much what I was required to. Do. I was required basically to read about two books a month, um, for yeah, basically for basically two books a month basically, and then. And then I had to do essays in every single book. So, so the additional thing is I had to do some close read on one aspect. So it might be like read this book here and analyze dialogue, read this other book here and go over how the author um, uses um, you know description or whatever, right? So I'm not saying to do that. I'm saying just read 24 books, pick one book and do all of it with one. Um, that's that's my style. That That's what I, what I think works well for someone's efficient. Then again, I don't know about you, basically, but you know, you probably maybe you read more than I do. You, I, in fact, well, I've seen your Goodreads. You definitely read more than I do. But well, 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 one, I do. I I went through a period of my yeah. life when I wasn't reading as much as I wanted to because yeah. I was just too busy, and that was very that was very frustrating for me. 
it was frustrating because I felt I was getting disconnected from books. And then also just there was stuff I wanted to read. I didn't feel connected to, you know, certainly, you know, recent books or a literary community. Um, but just my pace was too slow. So okay. over the past, you know, few years, I've taken steps to make more time for reading because it's very, okay. very important to me. Um, so that that being said, um, my own close reading kind of style is similar but different from yours. And then I'm less interested in focusing on one book to close read for a year and more interested in close reading different aspects of different books as necessary. So okay. I have a couple of books, let's say 10 books that I will go back to at any given point. Yep. And it's to check out what the author did in this chapter, check out how the author uses dialogue here, check out how this author has a snap bang climax, check out how this author does an opening, you know. And um, and these are books that just over time and over the process of doing this multiple, multiple times on a micro level, you know, for 20 minutes at a time, 10 minutes at a time, five minutes at a time, um, I've done close readings of so many of these different aspects that they blend together and i may i find myself able to borrow from them as necessary but okay. then also to go to them as necessary if i want a refresher on how x author does y technique i'll know one two five ten places that i can find that yeah, so it, it is important to recall what you read exactly, yeah. So I, I should preface that, yeah, yeah. Don't just read for pleasure. No story do I recommend reading that you read just for simply pleasure. You should be looking, you should be keeping kind of a memory bank like, oh, this author did this really cool thing in this chapter here. Maybe I'll keep that in mind. I used to have a OneNote like tab where I used to keep track of like certain things that authors do basically. But yeah, recalling is very, very important, absolutely. And being able to integrate it um, at a certain point when you need to. Um, but but overall, so whole, whole numbers here, right? What How much do you read? Um, in a year, you think, on average? So um, I found out last year that Goodreads only tracks the number of books you read if you put the date finished when you leave a review. Um, I did not know that. And so Goodreads said I only read five <laughs> books last year because I only figured that out oh. in like November or some shit, right? Um, so okay. I guess I could go back and put the date read on all my books. No, 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 yeah, no, it um, yeah. That being said, I did I did log my books more seriously um, a few years ago. In um, I believe it was 2017, I set out to read 50 books, and okay. I did. 50 um, books in a year. I read 50 so books in a year. Read. And a lot of those were very short books because okay. I was looking to make that you know make that quota. I believe I went through you know the Chronicles of Narnia that year, and again those are those are pretty short. Yeah. So I was able to make it make it through all of those. So you weren't um, so you weren't reading like Infinite Jest and Gravity's Rainbow and all these other no, things, no, right? No, no, yeah. No. Okay. And, and if anything, I probably you know set some of those books off until next year because I was looking right. to make this um okay. you know make this 50 number that I had set off to myself. Um, you know, maybe I put off reading books that I, you know, wanted to read or should have read just mm -hmm. because of that. I think the numbers like this can be really arbitrary, especially because you talk about, okay, how long does it take to read a book, right? Okay, is the book 40 pages or is yes. it, you know, a thousand pages? Exactly. You know, um, you know just um, I think numbers like this can get to be pretty, pretty arbitrary depending on the length of the books that the people are reading. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, what I did this year actually was taking that into consideration. Um, I set a Goodreads challenge of 40 books, 40 books. Okay. Um, which is about a book a week with some leeway in there for some very long books, you know? Okay. Um, so I don't feel pressured to, you know, finish a thousand page fantasy epic by, um, you know, by the end of the week to make my quota because I know there's some leeway in there and okay. that's okay. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Okay, you better than me because I, I hit. I don't think I've hit forty in a very long time. I, it, it's it's been a lot of years. I think, I think twenty four, twenty five has been my 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 routine for like at least better part of at least probably a decade. Um, and it works well, I think for me. If you're, if you're satisfied with that number, you know, as you you just said, it works for you. So I think that yeah. that's good. I think in in my case, I was becoming frustrated because there was stuff I wanted to read that I couldn't. And I think that was what drove me to make the change. Okay. Yeah. And that's the thing too, is obviously like comes out of desire, right? Like I, yes, I can think of 24 books that I'd like to read in a year. And I can think of all of them right now. Probably if you put me down, if in January you stop me to a chair, I'll top of your head, think name 24 books that you'd like to read. I can probably name 24 books to mm -hmm. read that I'm, that I've been interested in thinking about reading. 
mm-hmm. but for me it's never really about I won't ever get to it it's not that fear I don't, I don't have this mountain of stuff that I'm, I'm dying to ever read through and to be honest I there are even books I, I forget I always forget to log sometimes in Goodreads too but um, for me it's more about how many can I reasonably expect to do in a year mm-hmm. and with it make them books that read books that are worth taking something away from. So there are ones that I'll read that, I, that I'll never forget to, I'll never log into Goodreads. I will forget, um, et cetera. But I feel like if you can get to a number that you're comfortable with, stick with it because life, like right. Reading is the first thing I compromise in life. Like I'll compromise that before I do like my day job before like training at the gym before obviously writing. I I'm willing to compromise reading before anything else. Reading is the first thing I'm willing to check off the list. If something else has to go. Um, the only thing that I put reading above really is like mindless ledgers. Yeah. If I got to read or watch a television show, yeah, I'm probably going to read instead. Um, but again, a lot of it comes down to as well to just what your personality is. And my personality is one where I have to be relaxed to read and it doesn't always happen. Like there are plenty of times where I try to read and it's like, man, something bothers me from work. So I can't focus on the page. I'm thinking about something else and it's, it's hard to sit there and just focus. And a lot of it, no, oh, this is this yeah. is making a lot of sense. And you talk about, you know, the other things that you're doing, you know, you do have a full time day job. You do go to the gym and train regularly. You know, you are. In I don't look like it right now, guys. I'm sorry. It was in a car wreck, but <laughs> no, it's right. it's right. oh. you, um, yeah. you, you have other things that you're engaged with. And so yeah. knowing that you have those <sighs> other priorities in your life is definitely fine. And I think, you know, listeners should take away with the fact, OK, I have these other things that I'm working on. So. If I can't read as much as I'd like to, maybe that's just the way it yeah. is. Maybe you can look at prioritizing things so you read more or you can be satisfied with the amount that you are reading, you know, especially if you have other things that you want to get done, too. And those mm-hmm. things are important, too. Yeah. I think, um, you know, I think it's really easy to, you know, look at people who said I read 80 books last year and I think, oh, no, I only read, you know, 40 books. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not as good as that. That bird's like some contest or some garbage like that. But it's not like that. It's about. I did a lot of great things last year. You know, I did a lot of things that were good uses of my time and I was very, very happy about, you know, I also did some things that I was maybe weren't a good use of my time. And so of course I want to work on eliminating the things that weren't a good use and replacing them with things that are good uses of my time. And so no two people have the same schedule. So it's to, to hold up a number and say, you should be reading this much, I think is a mistake. Absolutely. The one last thing I want to point out too is I'm a very slow reader and a lot of that though is on purpose. And what I mean by that is I think people tend to read too fast. People that read like 80 books, 80 books a year. Yeah. I think you're reading yeah, too yeah. fast. Like I think the person that can read 24 books like I can, but can read slow enough that you actually take in whole sentences and actually extrapolate from them. I think it's really important. Like yes. I think a lot of people tend to get in the book club mentality. And what I mean by that is you'll read yeah. for the information. We talk about this all the time running here, right? We read for the information yes. and you don't take away the technique. So you read really quickly through it and you say, yeah, I read the whole thing. You, you know, yes. I, I, I read this whole book in, in like two days or three days. Right. But did you like, if I asked you to go back, can you, can you, can you tell me, you know, what certain techniques they, the author did really, really well that, that, that took you by surprise. And can you give some examples? They probably can't do it. And again, for the layman, that's awesome. L- layman, you don't have to. If you're an author, you got to be able to do that. You got to be able to read, you know, analyze. So I tend to read very slow, deliberately slow. And that does thing too, that, that'll affect it, right? Because, you know, if I can only read, you know, so many pages an hour, but someone can read three, four times that in an hour. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to finish nearly as many books in a year, but who took more away from it at the end of the year? Who took more away from it? And so I think for me, it's always about depth. It's always about it's always about how deep can I go with what I have versus how superficial um, someone else can go. And for me, it's always going for the depth. Always trying to take more. Um, it's always always the quality over the quantity. And I think with reading that, that plays a huge huge factor if you're an author. Um, you know, you'll take you'll take more you'll take more away from reading from doing a close reading on three books than you probably would if you read fifty books in a year. Like if three books, you could analyze everything about how the author did. I think you'll take more away to your writing than if you just read through 50 books just for the heck of it, but this, no, this is, um, again, I really like the distinctions you're making between, you know, the way most people read or book club reading, and then this sort of reading for technique, yeah. close reading, reading to understand what the author is doing. I think that the last thing that I want to add is, um, you know, I think that's okay also to make time for, pure entertainment reading or yeah. guilty pleasure reading or yes. reading, reading that, 
isn't going to help your writing in any way, isn't a part of your career. But you know what? I really like to read this kind of book. Screw you if you don't like it. Whatever. It's just for me. You know, oh, it's, smart, I, right? I think it's okay to have that kind of, yeah. you know, that, that just the, um, you know, if you love, you know, I don't know, like, goofy sci-fi novels from the 70s mm-hmm. go read those oh yes you know? absolutely if you love romance manga read that yep. you know it's like if you love you know true crime like where it's you know super repetitive and over the top go for it you know mm-hmm. nothing against true crime of course but you know no, no, if, I get you. if the if you just like reading that kind of book and you get a good experience from that mm-hmm. i think it's okay to enjoy the act of reading by going to books like that I think it when it, when you do that, it is important to think about the kind of reading you're doing as reading purely for pleasure or for a guilty pleasure or just for fun versus the kind of close reading that yes. we've been talking about. So Bingo. knowing how you're reading at any given point, yep, I think is very important. Very true. Yeah. All right. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, I hope that answered the questions here. <laughs> on your mind of how much did I read as an author? Um, that's the answer. And again, it's going to vary widely, um, but that, that's just, you know, our, kind of our opinions on it. Um, and so with that, uh, I'll be signing off here. And this is Josh Breslin. That's Ian M. Rogers. And we are going to see you all next week. Until then, I hope you all are enjoying your, your summer now. It's summertime. I can't believe it. Um, and so with that, we will see you all next week. Take it easy.